Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on problems of mass culture theory. This is the second part of a three-part lecture, mini lecture that explores mass culture theory and its relation to popular culture. And it's part of a series of lectures or mini lectures that are uh, part of a course called Popular Culture in the U.S. that's taught at North Shore Community College. So in the last mini lecture, we took a look at mass culture theory and what it is and kind of how it works. And in this mini lecture, we're going to problematize that. We're going to look at it and identify what are the shortcomings of this as a theory? What are some of the problems or the, the issues we see with it um, that really doesn't help us or doesn't really provide value to people that study popular culture? So as we said, mass culture theory is really about taste and making it explicit that elite culture should triumph and privilege over mass-produced culture. And we said again that mass-produced culture is less valuable because, of course, it is easy to reproduce and it's cheap to reproduce and therefore not considered as, um, as elite or as, as prestigious as individually created pieces of culture. That can be music, that can be art, um, that can be dance performance, etc. Uh, it's just this idea that it is not as valuable because it can be so easily reproduced and shared. But that, while, that's, uh, while that has been the case of how popular culture has been presented within popular culture studies, it's not necessarily a valuable theory. Um, and in fact, much of popular culture studies uh, of much much of popular culture studies has looked to undermine this or has looked to kind of get rid of this. It still lingers in our culture today when people say, oh, look at video games, look at this music performance or performer, look at, you know, these are bad examples, these are signs of the downfall of society, and we know that's ultimately bunk. People have been making these arguments for 200 years, and the truth of the matter is, culture has gotten better, culture has gotten more enhanced, people have gotten more intelligent. So, you know, it, it, it kind of flies in the face and it's a really debunked theory, but it still has its grips um, throughout culture today. So what are some of the problems? Um, the first is, as I've said a few times now, is that it's elitist. It privileges, it says the elite, uh, you know, there's this elite element of culture that is untouchable, um, that can only be experienced in certain ways, it, you know, it privileges the elite class, I think, in a lot of people think, unnecessarily. It focuses on taste and style, and taste and style are arbitrary. The best example we can give is Shakespeare. Sp Shakespeare in today's culture is considered high art. But of course, if you go back to the 1600s when he's actually writing these things, it's considered popular culture. Even in the 1800s, Shakespeare was popular culture. So I think there, you know, there's something to be said here about, you know, that taste and style are arbitrary. They're dictates of the time. And so to assume that elite culture and its taste is somehow better is problematic because in a hundred years from now though that taste and style could be irrelevant or something within popular culture could be considered more you know more part of the elite culture the Beatles are again a great example when the Beatles first come out they are of course popular culture but when we talk about the Beatles today we they are discussed in elite cultural terms also, you know, mass culture theory denies agency and experiences, uh, experience of those who actually experience popular culture. Uh, when we said in the last lecture is that, you know, this, this assumes a passive audience. And assuming that the audience is passive in, in mass culture denies them agency in what they may be actually experiencing. A good example is, and I've certainly been guilty of this, is, you know, trouncing or devaluing people who read, say, a series like Twilight and saying, you know, that's junk. I, I've been guilty of this, I'll admit. But the reality is that's denying the actual experiences of the people reading it and feeling connected to the protagonist and her challenges and, and, and troubles. So it, it's another element that, you know, is a problem with mass culture theory. It also revokes the multiplicity of meanings in types of popular culture. Uh, it assumes that popular culture in all its forms and all its, its narratives are singular in their meaning, in their value, uh, in their experience, and that again is problematic. Just like people interpret Shakespeare differently or experience Shakespeare differently, so too will they experience other forms of narratives, other pieces of popular culture. 
One of the critiques of popular culture within mass theory is that it's homogeneous, it's almost all the same. Uh, but again, that critique could be leveled against high culture, that you see a lot of the same elements across elite culture. Um, and so again, it, it gets to be problematic that high culture or elite culture is somehow unique or has its own sharings of unique, but it's just as similar or has the same range. Um, I would say it's actually even a more limited range than what we see in popular culture. And it actually fails to explain the rise of popular culture. That is, if mass culture theory is a way of understanding popular culture and its role to, uh, as we said before uh, in, the, in the previous lecture, you know, mass culture theory says that mass culture is going to destroy society, um, it fails to actually explain the rise of popular culture's dominance and why so many people have become invested in popular culture. It fails to explain why society hasn't fallen apart. It fails to explain, you know, how much of a stronghold popular culture has had if it is this lacking in value. And then, of course, it hints at the resentment uh, to the replacement of cultural, stud uh, cultural elites. That is, there's a lot within mass culture theory, and you can go back to Matthew Arnold's Culture and Anarchy, that th just smacks of, you know, being afraid of losing that power, losing that cultural authority. Um, that the elites are resentful that people are investing time and energy and, in these other things and not finding, you know, the... the inherent value of these particular uh, elite products of, uh, of culture. And finally, I just want to, I, I want to just identify a quote here from uh, Dominic Sternati in, in his book, and I'll come back to this in other lectures, an introduction to, to theories of popular culture, um, because one of the things that elite culture does that we see within the criticism of mass culture or popular culture is this privileging in this uh, this valuing of the past. And so there's this great quote that I like to look at or to keep us in mind. Whenever somebody is saying, oh, cult, you know, popular culture day is horrible, there's this implicit idea that somehow culture of the past was so much better, was so much more refined. And Sternati has this to say, representations of the past may themselves be cultural constructs and tell us more about the present than the past. Notwithstanding this, the questions raised suggest that mass culture theory is unclear about its terms, lacks a sense of history, and harbors an unfounded nostalgia for a romanticized and imaginary past. And I think this is important to remember is that whenever you hear critiques of modern culture, they're often hinted or compared to or based in how the past was. And of course, we all assume our, or we all have this experience of our childhood popular culture or our childhood culture being idyllic and utopian and wonderful and say, oh, but today it's so horrible. Uh, that's, a false, that's a false comparison. Um, and, and we see this happen time and again. All right, that's all for now. Uh, I hope this kind of introduces you to some of the problems of mass culture theory and some ideas about, you know, as you start to hear critiques of popular culture, where these ideas come from. Thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.